Um, Jess, first of all, just the the, the app was launched um, overnight. What's been the uptake so far? Yeah, so it became available um, for Apple users first at around half nine last night. Then Android users uh, were able to download it. By around midnight last night, uh, we had more than 40,000 um, downloads and it has just continued to climb over the last few hours. For those who don't know, uh, just a quick run through of how exactly this will work. The idea is that uh, if everybody in a dreamland, if everybody puts Mm. this app onto their phone and enables Bluetooth and keeps their Bluetooth on, if somebody, say if you, for example, are tested and it's found that you have COVID-19, you will then get in touch with a contact tracing team who will issue you a code to your phone. You put that code into your contact tracing app. And myself and Shane, who've been in your company for more than 15 minutes within a 1.5 metre radius, will get a notification on our phone. Now, we will not know that it's Andrea Gilligan. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you get a ping to say Andrea Gilligan is COVID? No, you do not. And this is something that's very, very important from a privacy point of view. What you will get is you'll get a notification saying that you are in the proximity of somebody who has now tested positive for COVID. So to monitor your own symptoms and to take action if you do feel any symptoms. I really want to do stress, this is not something, that this has been built and designed and it took a long time for it to become available because it's been designed to capture as little information, as little personal information as possible. When you download the app, firstly, you you have to give express consent that you're happy to have the app. So of the 40,000 people who've downloaded the app, we don't know that they've all registered to use the app or that they're going to continue to register to use the app. So they wouldn't all have had to, for instance, give their mobile number if they didn't want to. No, and this is something else. So you may see the prompt when you are setting up the app. It'll ask you for, uh, you know, bits and pieces of information. Uh, It'll ask for your mobile phone number and you do not have to give it. That is an optional thing. And the reason the option is there is to speed up the contact tracing process. If, for example, I get the notification saying I've been in close contact, but you do not have to have it on your phone. Uh, The other thing that people need to be aware of as well is, as I mentioned there, you have to keep the Bluetooth tooth on your phone the entire to, yeah, time. Ask you, but I mean, I can just imagine for some people listening to this this morning, if they're heading into work, they have the phone charged up, they may not have a charger with them. This are, Could this be a deterrent to people? I'd say the concept of it could be a deterrent to people, but in fact, you know, engineers from Google and from Apple who've worked on the construction of this technology say that it's been designed to be as minimally uh, invasive on your battery. But I know myself, habitually, I use Bluetooth headphones. The second I walk yeah, into work, okay. the first thing I do is just knock off my Bluetooth. Before this to be effective, you need to keep your Bluetooth on the entire time.